Hello friends, welcome to Mom, the Hindu News Analysis Session presented by Diksha Space. Today, here we are going to discuss about December 17, 2020, the Hindu newspaper. Today's first article, Privacy, a Fundamental Right and the State Must Protect. Today's article we are discussing in the context or background of entirely right to privacy which was declared as fundamental right. If you all remember, 24th August 2017, a nine bench judgment of Supreme Court in K.S. Putswami versus Union of India came up or gave that status of right to privacy as fundamental right under part 3 of the Indian constitution. And those rights cannot be given or taken away by law and all law and executive actions must abide by them. Today, this article we are discussing in the context of an another article which was published on December 1st. The December 1st article was stated as is a person's address public information or not and that article raised concerns with respect to Bombay High Court's judgment of directing the government to take down the address of RTI applicant from the website. So today in this article, we are actually contradicting the statements or the author is here contradicting the statements which were given by the author of December 1st article. The article of December 1st had given few reasons ki why the Bombay High Court's judgment is not correct and the government which has published the data of our address of RTI applicant is right. The arguments which were presented at that time were first, there is no law or principle which prevents the state from disclosing information of the address and the onus of making the address private should be on the RTI applicant by not specifying address and only PO box mentioned. The example which was given at that time was the public information directory also public telephone directory has address of uh, the people and voters list as also containing the address but these are not treated as private information and the disclosure of the information or address is actually helping to maintain transparency and accountability of social welfare programs and which will in turn serve the public interest. Today, the author is contradicting this statement by stating that the example of voter list or public telephone directory which is actually given is a rhetoric of saying Indians don't actually care about their privacy. But the same statement which was made by the state was expelled by Supreme Court judgment in K.S. Putswami versus Union of India. There, there was no any judicial test which was conducted with respect to data which is on uh, digital mode. But today, we need to take care or care about it because in future that might cause a harm which will be aggravated in future. The second argument on December 1st was that the High Court did not give a comprehensive details with respect to the principle of transparency or privacy. If you look at this, the details or the information judgment which was given with respect to KS Putswami versus Union of India declaring fundamental right that is right to privacy as fundamental right makes or obliges the state to respect and protect the fundamental or the information privacy. Here. In this judgment, the state came up with four prolonged tests in order to articulate which is private and which is not private and what state can do. If there is requirement of backing of law, then this information can be made public. Second, if there is legitimate state purpose, if the state has legitimate purpose, then it can do it. Third, and there is a proposed action having rational nexus to such purpose. So there need to be a rational purpose. Third, then there was fourth, extent of infringement being necessary and proportionate to purpose constitute that trust. So third was extent of infringement being necessary and proportionate to the purpose constitute the test. So these are the four tests which the constitutional or nine bench judge gave this test is to be conducted for any data or any action of the state. If you all remember, there was a protest with respect to Citizenship Amendment Act in UP and the government there took out a Suomoto action, putting out the details like photo, their address, their other details in the posters and distributed in the state by the state government. At that time, Allahabad High Court considering following Putswami case stated that state the action of state 
nothing but an unwarranted interference in the privacy of the people and asked the government to take out the details which were made public if you look at this, this example this is very clear that the address of the rti applicants need to be protected and it is considered to be a private interference third judgment or third argument which was presented by an author on december 1st was that section 8 sub clause 1j of the rti act asserts that there is an obligation to disclose personal information where such information bears a nexus to public activity but the rti applicants address has any nexus to public activity or not that needs to be considered first and the section which allows disclosure would actually provide an unwarranted invasion of privacy the high court's decision with respect to section sub 8 sub clause 1 and j still allows disclosure subject to public information officer making a case by case judgment on whether the larger public interest is served if the data is made public that is his personal information so this need to be made on a case by case basis not that every rti applicants data is made public in the website so it is not only about mere publication of address if you look at the broader context it actually leads to target of violence and retaliation against those rti applicants who are raising their voices so here the author is ultimately stating that protection of privacy of individual and transparency of public authorities are two sides of the same coin and open and transparent governan government that also guarantees respect protect promote and fulfill everyone's right to privacy is not a contradiction in terms here the people or the applicant must waive or make a compromise on their right to privacy to exercise their right under transparency law is a reasonable barrier that is causing a chilling effect in exercise of those rights quite significantly harming the very cause that is sought to be championed next article a protocol of difference that is plainly injurious this article we are discussing in the context of prime minister narendra modi performed bhumi puja right for a new parliament building in new delhi after supreme court was pleased to give its assent for the foundation stone laying ceremony if you all remember this all happened in the previous week and in this context there is seen that there is innovation of jurisprudence of difference what is jurisprudence jurisprudence is a judicial activity and difference is nothing but actually submissing or uh, politely accepting something in this judgment it was seen that the supreme court had difference with respect to the government and asked the government to show the same difference to the uh, court without any destruction or there should be no construction at that point of time so what is this in this present context we are seeing a difference with respect to court on the other end and asking the government to show the difference to the court here there is a beautiful example which is presented with respect to us supreme court if you see in the previous months there had been a ruckus with respect to us presidential elections and donald trump going to the judiciary for the dispute with respect to elections if you remember most of the judges of supreme court are appointed by the republican candidate that is donald trump if and at that point of time the judges who are at the supreme court of united states they had shown difference to donald trump then the case would have been other way around but they kept their integrity their moral ethics along with them and they showed as per the law what has to be done if you all remember the constitutional design and institutional arrangement has given powers to the judiciary to come out of their own limitations and excise as per the as per the expectation or the constitutional idols but the concept of difference what is being seen today in the indian context is actually going to cost india's republic health and it has produced an unhealthy lopsidedness in our democratic arrangement we seem to be forgetting that elections only confer an office and not any kind of canonization so here in this article any difference which is shown by a supreme court is actually not good for the democratic country and 
there is a growing nexus between judiciary and government is the point of concern what is trying to be raised by the article writer here if you see a rajya sabha member who was appointed after his retirement from chief justice of india is showing a sense of lopsidedness in our democracy so ultimately the author is trying to say here the difference or the protocol of difference is not good for our uh, republic or the indian system next article a million reasons to march as we all know there is a still ongoing crisis with respect to farmers and the government with respect to the farm bills which were introduced in the monsoon session of the parliament so there is an analysis of the article which is being presented here by an author stating different aspects or different reasons which are leading to the reasons for the march if you all remember here the people of punjab are said to know how to farm but they also know how to field also or how to protect their field here it is being said that the government which introduced three farm bills that is farmers produce trade and commerce promotion and facilitation bill 2020 farmers empowerment and protection agreement on price assurance and farm services bill 2020 and essential commodities amendment bill 2020 which were introduced in the monsoon session of the parliament and proposed relaxation or restriction on the purchase and sale of farm produces and stocking under essential commodities act 1955 it also outlined a framework on contract farming if you all remember all these three bills were introduced on september 14th they were passed by lok sabha on september 17th and rajya sabha on 7 september 20th the president gave his assent on september 24 so between september 14th and september 24 it is hardly if you see a 10 days of gap which led to a passing of a bill which had so much of impact on the indian context agriculture reform which had always been on the agenda of government from the last few decades the policy experts have been putting their opinion stating that there is a need to shift people from agricultural work to cheap labor in the market and service sector but this large scale shift of the rural workforce is not possible unless and until there are jobs which are created for their benefit and which are formal in their nature but the only option today what we have got is to reduce them to perennial casual labor force in unwelcoming cities this reforms or this shift which became unsuccessful has led to a growth of people dependent on agricultural activities if you see in today's context it was not only the farm act which had raised concern or dissent among the people's mind there was also an industrial relation code bill 2020 which changed the laws relating to trade unions and conditions of employment in industrial establishments and investigation and settlement of industrial disputes these parallelly disturbed or suppressed the basic rights and freedoms of the labor union and laborers if you all remember when the farmers are insisting a total lab, lab, roll back and no deliberation or amendment they mean they know what they are saying union agriculture minister and other functionaries are saying that these reforms are to free the farmers from the clutches of the middlemen and increase or double the farmers income but there are some bitter experiences which farmers are not able to accept in today's context if you look at pepsico contract farming ex- experience in punjab is actually giving them a clear idea ki what contract farming is going to do that is not going to clearly benefit the small and marginal farmers in 2015 and 16 data more than one third of the population in punjab is marginal and small population having less than 2 hectares of land another one third are people having 2 and 4 hectares 28% more than 4 and 10 hec- between 4 and 10 hectares and 5% are only large that is holding 10 hectares or more so this is with respect to experience of contract farming what farmers have already experienced so they are not ready to accept it in the city of bihar also when the apmc system was abolished in 2006 there also it is argued that the open market operations are all odd against marginal and small farmers in a country where large chunk of population is holding only 
marginal or small land then how can they benefit from the fact that contract farming is going to be helpful here the farmers along with the abolition of three farm bills there are other demands which are being put up in front of the government first is repeal of three agricultural acts and electricity amendment bill 2020 and the large unions are also seeking implementation of universal public distribution system across the country because there is an end to farmers exploitation by big traders and multinational companies in government regulated agricultural produce market only when the state regulation improves and there is call by intellectual and activist and anti-CAA protesters all over the country to withdraw the false cases registers against them. So their movement has forged unity and has now strongly converged with other people's rights. It is a fight not just for farm produce price now, but also for justice and democracy and above all dignity. Next article, Excellence in Diversity. This article we are discussing in the context of Education Ministry constituting a committee headed by IIT Delhi's director to come up with a suggestions for effective implementation of res reservation in central institutions such as IITs. So here in this article we need to understand with the significant expansion of IIT system that is after 2008 re the reservation was extended to student candidates belonging to OBCs and this has resulted in a vexed situation where institutions are unable to find enough qualified faculty members whose recruit recruitment must also meet quota norms. As per Central Educational Institutions Reservation in Teachers Cadre Act 2019, IITs must fulfill the important goal of affirmative action while making appointments. So the benefit that cannot be extended to many due to severe mismatch between demand and av availability of technology research graduates Last year, IIT Delhi had a deficit of around 30% in their teacher ranks and 23 such institutes in India have been highlighting the scale of crisis. In that situation, this committee was constituted and which has come up with two options. One is to exempt IITs from quotas by including them in Schedule 2 2019 laws which is applicable to Institute of Excellence, Research Institutions and Institution of National and Strategic Importance. And second is to provide reservation to specified grade of assistant professors, taking the institution as a whole. And in a, over a period of time, then this reservation can be de-reserved in subsequent years. So here, there is an actually positive response with respect to development of the people who are underprivileged. The government-sponsored preparation program at IITs which can help candidates eligible for reservation to get acquainted with high-quality academic work and optionally prepare for PhD if they aspire to be teacher can help to solve the problem of teacher crisis today. Government must aim for progressive redistribution for which policy should actively expand equal opportunity starting with strong liberal public school system. This will end strengthen diversity and lay the foundation for the kind of scholarship that institution of excellence need. Next article, discouraging numbers. This article we are discussing in the context of National Family Health Survey 5 reports which have been declared. And this is the phase 1 and phase 2 is going to be out yet. As you all know, in phase 1, there are 22 states and union territories which are counted or taken into consideration. Still, Punjab, Jharkhand, Odisha, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Rajasthan are yet to be declared. In 2015 and 16, it was National Family Health Survey 4 results which were declared and now we are comparing between National Family Health Survey 5 and 4. If you look at the four key metrics, nutritional status of children have declined in 2019 and 20 that is 5 status in comparison to 15 and 16. Gujarat, Maharashtra and West Bengal have seen an increase of patients with respect to anemia and wasted. Wasted means low weight for height children in comparison have increased in 2019 and 20. If you look at childhood stunting, there has been increase in 13 states out of 12 in comparison to National Family Health Survey 4. However, there have been noticeable improvement in Bihar and Assam. Bihar has shown a promising decline of 5.4 percentage point but still it remains one of the 
ஹையஸ்ட் பர்சன்டேஜ் ஸ்டண்டட் சில்ட்ரன் தட் இஸ் ஃபார்ட்டி டூ பாயிண்ட் நைன் பர்சன்ட் ஆர் ஸ்டில் ஹேவிங் த கேசஸ் ஆஃப் சைல்டுஹுட் ஸ்டண்டிங் இன் பீஹார் இன் கம்பேரிசன் டு பிக் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் நேஷனல் ஃபேமிலி ஹெல்த் சர்வே ஃபைவ் வாஸ் எ ஃப்ளாக்ஷிப் இம்ப்ரூவ்மெண்ட் இன் மெனி ஆஃப் தி ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் கண்ட்ரிபியூட்டிங் டு மால் நியூட்ரிஷன் அண்ட் புவர் ஹெல்த் கம் அவுட் கம்ஸ் இஃப் யூ லுக் அட் வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு சானிடேஷன் கிளீன் குக்கிங் ஃபியூல் அண்ட் உமன் வெல்பீங் வித் ரெஸ்பெக்ட் டு வேரியஸ் ஸ்டேட்ஸ் ஸ்பவுசல் வயலன்ஸ் in 17 out of 22 states there has been improvement child marriages have declined women have got with respect to access to bank accounts has also increased but persistence of poor anthropometric measures related to hunger and nutrition suggests that existing programs have to be evolved in order to address them as you all remember poshan abhiyan which was put up with respect to improvement of malnutrition program in india and has a target of around 2 percentage points decrease in childhood stunting every year we are able to reach out only 1 percentage point till now so there is a requirement with respect to consideration of this programs improvement the welfare activities need to be evolved so eradication of hunger and extreme poverty has to be the main strategy with respect to government's policy united nation sustainable development goal target which needs to be met is not the only target or only goal to be sustained or only goal to be taken care of so there is a need in order to look out the economic growth and general welfare in the present scenario next article the wrong road to food security in this article we are going to discuss about report of global hunger index 2020 in which india has been ranked 94th out of 107 countries and india stays behind bangladesh pakistan and nepal united nation food and agricultural organization report says 194 million people go hungry every day in india which is comprising of around 23% of world's undernourished population if you look at here in this context we need to remember about right to food which was made as a part of article 21 of the constitution that is making right to life if you look at uh, india being independent from last 73 years and the country has reached self sufficiency in agricultural production after green revolution in india but still mass hunger is rampant across the country in 2018 and 19 it produced around 283.37 million tons of food grains and india ranks first in terms of millet and second in terms of rice and wheat production in the world with respect to horticultural crops like fruits and vegetables also we are in surplus that is 313 million tons in 2018 and 19 but still in india we are seeing mass hunger as a problem and there are reports as of now like right right to food campaign says around 100 deaths have been seen till now from 2015 department of consumer affairs which says around 62 tons of 62000 tons of food grains are damaged in fci warehouses between 2011 and 2017 is the data most disheartening in 2016 and 17 alone over 8600 tons of food grains were lost if you look at indian council for research on international economic relations says there is a proliferation of ineligible and bogus ration cards but simultaneously there are genuine people also who does not have ration card this situation shows there is a poor management of food ecosystem in india so their need to ensure food security comes up with two prolonged policies which are being discussed here first government must ensure remunerative prices to farm produce because as msp is provided remunerative then there will be income in the hands of farmers which they will purchase for themselves a nutritious or essential food items secondly it is critical to improve the public distribution system and public procurement in india if you look at the annapurna scheme has been discussed over here annapurna yojana which gives 10 kilograms of food grains per month free of cost to destitute persons above 65 years of old age is need to be revamped here because center has fixed that 20% of number of persons who are eligible for national old age pension but who are not receiving such persons will be available or eligible under annapurna scheme but as you can see in kerala social security pension covers almost all the section of people in a community so all eligible people are excluded from annapurna yojana this demands an immediate attention and resolution with the present context what india is facing as of now if you look at global pulse confederation pulses are part of healthy balanced diet and have shown an important role in preventing illnesses 
such as cancer, diabetes and heart disease. World Food Programme has also included 60 grams of pulses in its typical food basket. Parliamentary Standing Committee on Food Consumer Affairs and Public Distribution, where the report was titled as Price Rise of Essential Commodities Causing Causes and Effects 2020, says dietary shift in the favor of protein in an otherwise vegetarian society, the consumption of pulses is growing, but the production has not kept pace. If you see in the few last two years, there has been increase in the MSP, which has led to increased procurement and creation of buffer, buffer stock of pulses. So this is the right time or ideal time to put the pulses into public distribution system in order to improve and lead to the journey of food security in India. Next article, communication satellite to be launched today. In this article, we are going to discuss ISRO will be launching communication satellite CMS-01 on board with PSLV C-50. Here we need to understand that this CMF, CMS-01 communication satellite will be launched from Satish Dhawan Space Center. CMS-01 is a communication satellite which will be providing with C-band frequency. Here, the spectrum will include India, mainland, Andaman Nicobar and Lakshadweep Islands. CMF-01 is the 42nd communication satellite and PSLV on its 52nd mission. If you all remember, in November 7th, that is in the month of November on 7th, ISRO placed its India's Earth Observatory satellite ES, EOS-01 and 9 other consumer or customer satellites which were placed. After that, this will be a mission which ISRO is going to take up. So CMS-01 is a communication satellite which ISRO is going to launch on Thursday. Next article, India goes down in ranks. In this article, we are going to discuss the United Nations Human Development Index. India has been ranked 131 out of 189 countries. However, there has been a new metrics which has been introduced in this report which is called as planetary pressure. So if this planetary pressure is taken into consideration, India's rank will move up by 8 places it is being seen here. If you look at, this is the first time United Nations Development Program has implemented this planetary pressure which is called per capita carbon emission and its material footprint which will measure amount of fossil fuels, metals and other resources that are used to make goods and services for its consumers. If this planetary pressure is included, then Norway which is actually topping will be moved 15 places down. Ireland will actually top the table if planetary pressure is taken into consideration. 50 countries would drop entirely out of the very high human development group. So planetary pressure adjusted HDI or planetary PHDI. If you take into this consideration, Australia will fall under 72 places, US and Canada 45 and 40 places respectively. China would go around 16 places from its current ranking. So with this, you can understand India in that context has been performing well with respect to carbon emission goals because we are increasing our ranking with planetary pressure if taken into consideration and urged Indian policy makers to take the path of sustainable development goal. So HDI itself is an assessment of nation's health, education and standard of living. So we need to take a positive steps with respect to other factors in order to get into top ranking of human development index. This is all about today's Hindu newspaper analysis. So we will meet up again with tomorrow's edition. Till then, take care of your health, eat well, study well. Thank you. Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.